which you did. And the same blessing is transferred on you. In Jesus' precious name. Psalm 85 and in verse 8. He said, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. He will speak peace. Tonight, we are going to be receiving guidelines on hearing from God. Guidelines. Because by Sunday, we'll be looking at the different ways in which we hear God before stepping into the vengeance. Guidelines. Our objective is to understand the things that will facilitate our hearing or receiving from God. Those things that will facilitate our hearing and receiving from God. Like we said earlier on, one of the most important things that will happen to anybody is to know what God is saying and then to do what God is saying. In my own life, hearing God, knowing the will of God, knowing the mind of God is the reason for this ministry. As a matter of fact, all the way from my youthful years, I remember when it was time to go to the university. I had a mind for engineering. I had the heart for medicine and surgery. It was very, very strong to read medicine. And then I had prayed and I felt convinced that I would read medicine. I had started even reading anatomy books while I was not yet in the university. Then we were in a prayer meeting one day and God gave me a confirmation. While we were praying, after my A-level, a woman in that crowd, he said, oh, I see this young man there with a, a white lab coat, stethoscope on his neck. She didn't know what I was, I was, I was trusting and praying and trusting for confirmation for. That was the path. Stepped into university when it was time to be married. Knowing the voice of God, clear speaking, clear knowing, got me married to my wife today. If I didn't hear God, maybe the picture will be different today. Stepping into ministry got us also to where we are today. If I didn't hear God, maybe you wouldn't know me, I wouldn't know you. So it's very, very important for us to know what God wants us to do with our lives. And I am going to give about 8 to 10 guidelines, about 10 guidelines that will facilitate knowing the will of God for our lives. Number one, be word filled. Be filled with the word of be filled with the word of God continually. This is not a repetition of what we said before. Be filled with the word of God continually. So you can know when what you are hearing is God or not. Continually. The Bible said in Psalm 29 verse 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Then the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The waters is the word. According to Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 26. The voice of the Lord is on top of the waters. Be filled with the word continually. It will help you to know whether what you are hearing is from God or not. 
find somewhere to qualify that second statement. Because someone will suddenly wake up one day and say, God says, my millions is in the selling of tobacco. I am to make a lot of money by doing this or that that are con completely contrary to the world. Someone wakes up one day and says, God says I should divorce my wife for no just reason. Why? Did she do anything? Nothing. Is there any challenge? No. Why? God said to me, the future that he is taking me to this wife cannot cope with it. At that point, you know that someone is hearing the voice of the devil. Be continually filled with the word of God. So as to discern whether what you are hearing is God or not. Number two, be committed to doing what is written. While seeking what he is saying. Be committed to doing what is written. While seeking what he is saying. Identify there are so many things to do with the word of God. Keep doing what, he's, what has been written. As you trust to hear what he is saying. Who am I to marry? What am I to do? You cannot hear, if you are not hearing any of them yet. Identify commandments that are clear. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you should go and bear forth fruit. That your fruit will abide. John 15, 16. So that whatever is... You ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. Okay. So if I go and bear fruit, as I am asking God to show me who to marry, he will show me. Right? So I hit the road bearing fruit. Lord, what business do I do? All right. It's not showing me the business yet, but it is written. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. Is that right? All right, so if I deploy myself into service, it means that it is possible for him to show me where my blessing is. Be committed, brutally committed to doing what is written while seeking what he is saying. Identify something the word of God says you should do. That will make God do what you are expecting. Or at least make God say what you are expecting him to say. That is number two. Number three. Be patient. To learn his voice. Be patient. In the process of learning and knowing his voice. Because as it is. You remember the story of the little prophet Samuel. While he was in the process of learning the voice of God. He ran. To Eli three times. And Eli said, at the third time, if you hear him again, tell him, speak, thy servant hear it. Then in 1 Samuel chapter 16, if you read from verse 1 all the way to verse 8, you will see how Samuel, who is now the elderly Samuel, the prophet 
whose word never fell, fell to the ground missed the voice twice. It's so early, I'd be saying, surely the Lord's anointed. And God said, you are, you are not hearing me. You are only hearing your eyes. I'm not looking at his outward. He saw Shama. He saw Abinadab. Don't be too angry if you ever missed it. Don't be too mad at yourself. It shows that you are a human being. You are a person. You are a learner. All you need to do is, Lord, it looks like I didn't hear you well in this case. Please, Help me to hear you better. I told you the story of Papo Yedepo when they, he did the commissioning of ministry and he was on his way, told everybody he was going to Joss and God told him, you are going to know Joss. You didn't hear me. You heard your heart. I've seen people, veterans, miss it. Not miss it iniquitously or things like that, but they thought it was this way and it was not. So, be patient as we learn the voice. Am I communicating at all? How many of you have ever heard the voice of someone on the phone and you thought it was somebody else until they said, oh, it's not, I'm the one. In the process of learning and knowing his voice. But you will hear in the name of Jesus. Number four, don't expect God to speak exactly the same way he speaks to another. Don't expect God to speak to you exactly the same way someone else says he spoke to them. Don't expect that. Because that may get you discouraged. If you read the account of the birth of Jesus in Matthew chapter 2, you can read the whole thing. An angel spoke to the shepherds about the birth of Jesus. But God used the stars to speak to the wise men about the birth of Jesus. I've heard my father in the Lord describe sometimes how God spoke to him on issues. It was completely different from how I heard and I hear. And if I would say, oh, this is how... It, God spoke to him and he must speak to me this way, then frustration is inevitable. There are some who are more visionary than others. There are some whose hearings are sharper than others. And there are different ways we'll be enumerating that on Sunday. But trust God to speak to you the way that is unique to you. Am I communicating? Trust God to speak to you in the language you can understand. Trust God to speak to you in the language you can understand. I see that voice coming for somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody getting anything here at all? Say a louder amen. Number five. Don't be prejudiced regarding what you want to hear from God. And I will explain what I mean. Don't be prejudiced regarding what you want to hear from God. Don't 
decide what you are expecting to hear before God said anything. Meaning is, it is difficult to hear God when you have decided what you want him to say. <laughs> Am I communicating? You have determined what you want to hear. You, you, you know what you want to hear. I heard from Catherine Kuhlman that the easiest way to hear God is when you don't have a choice in the matter. Lord, should I go to America or not? When already you want to go to America? And what is in your mind is to go to America. And what you want to hear is my son. In fact, I have prepared Atlanta, Georgia for you. The whole of that state is waiting for you. They haven't seen, they haven't seen power yet until you arrive there. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are already decided what you want to hear. I mean, you will never hear God. You would. Meanwhile, God wanted you to remain here. Somebody wants to get married. He lines up three names and says, Lord, which is the one? And he already knows which one he wants. Hallelujah. You can only hear God. When you don't have a choice in the matter. Lord, if you say I should go to America, I will go. If you say I should remain in Nigeria, I will remain. I know the best place to be on earth is not America, it's not Nigeria, it's not Jamaica, it's not the, the best place to be is in the center of your will. That is where I want to be. And when that is your situation, it is easy. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4 to 5. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet. He already has idols in his heart. He still came to the prophet. He said, I the Lord will answer him. Not according to what I want him to know, but I will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Hallelujah. You don't decide for, for God what to say. Don't put words in the mouth of God. There are many people who try to put words in God's mouth. Words that make them pompous and arrogant. My son, I want to let you know that you are better than everybody. And I want to let you know that I have lifted you. Don't mind them. You are better than them. <laughs> that is self-talking. Somebody say amen. In the name that is above every name, clarity is coming for somebody. So in all likelihood, Somebody has not yet heard God because he has decided for God what he wants to hear. Don't be prejudiced regarding that which you want God to speak. Number six, don't expect God to speak in areas where his will is already known. Don't expect God to speak in areas or on issues where his will is clear. And the will of God is what helps us to pray correctly. First, John chapter 5 verse 14. If we pray in accordance with his will, he hears us. On areas where his will is clearly known. What is, what kind of will is that? 
I will give you pastors according to my own heart. Then somebody comes to God and say, Lord, should I go to church? Is there a need for pastor? The Bible says we are all priests. The only thing you will hear is the voice of the devil. You know, in our university in those days, and it happens very frequently, people will step out of church and say, God has left church. Church is Babylon. Church is this. Church is that. Oh, he's not moving in the church anymore. Some stayed to themselves. The outcome of that is some of them got destroyed. Men who started living with women and so forth got destroyed. No future. Don't expect God to speak in areas where his will is clear. There are things that are very, very clear. Otherwise, you waste time. Number seven, never attempt to trivialize the voice of God. You don't never attempt to trivialize the voice of God. Never expect God to speak on issues that are entirely your decision to make. The Bible said the voice of the Lord is majestic. Psalm 29 verse 4 Five, six, full of majesty. It's full of majesty. Is is an honorable voice. Lord, I'm going out today. Should I wear a black shoe or red? You know, there are people who operate like that. Lord, um, should I carry red pen or black? Oh, just, and then you see something. While I was working on this message, the Spirit of the Lord told me, he said, never assume. When we talk about divine direction and the voice of God, people go to all manner of extremes. The Holy Spirit said, I should not go to work today. Holy Spirit said, I should stop eating rice. Holy Spirit said, I should, all manner. Holy Spirit said, I should not greet my wife when she, I should just avoid her for now. All manner. The whole thing is so three. Every single thing, Holy Spirit. Now, the end outcome of some of those people is insanity. Just insanity. I mean, we had people in the university. Holy Spirit said, I should not go to class yet. Class today. Holy Spirit says so. Until they say, Holy Spirit said, I should leave school. Stepped out of school to do what? Holy Spirit said, I should go and do it. Next thing, they return back to school after one year. Some of them almost ran mad. Some abandoned church for almost donkey years after that. Holy Spirit say, Holy Spirit say. Please calm down. Plenty. Which one should I wear? Okay. What of which time? Calm down. Am I communicating? Live your life. If you are asking God those kind of things, what will you do when major issues arrive? Leave, leave, leave divine direction for drastic decisions where necessary. For critical life junctions decisions. Or except the Lord speak to you on his own concerning issues that are very normal and regular on his own. Critical life decisions. Critical junction decisions. Never attempt to trivialize the voice of God. The direction of God. Because the voice of God is majestic. That was point number what? Number seven. 
right, let's go to point number number eight. I'm looking for point number eight. In the name of Jesus, you shall not take that voice for granted. Number eight. Don't get discouraged when God appear silent. We are dealing with guidelines on hearing the voice of God. When you are expecting God to speak on some issues, don't get discouraged. Just keep at the back of your mind Psalm 85 verse 8, I will hear. However long it takes, I will hear. What God the Lord will speak, I will hear. I will hear. I identified about five reasons that may make it appear like God is silent. Number one, Reasons why God may appear silent. One, you may be on the right track and there is no need to speak. God is not talkative. You may be on the right track and there may be no need to speak. You may be, perhaps you are being proved with what he spoke before. Proved, tried, tested with what he spoke before. And you know the teacher does not speak or teach during exams. He wants you to just produce for him what he told you before. Maybe you are being proved. Maybe you are being tested. Maybe you are being tried with what he spoke before. Three. There may be something he said before that you haven't done yet. There may be something God spoke to you about before that you have not yet done. He doesn't give instructions or speak just for the sake of speaking. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? There may be something he spoke so, at such points, Lord, is there something you want me to do I'm not doing? Is there something you have said that I have not hearkened to? So there may be something he spoke that you have not yet done. Number four. God may be speaking in ways that you are not hearing. Because God sp speaks in diverse ways. When it appears as if God is silent, he may be speaking some other ways that you are not hearing or seeing or you are not paying attention or familiar with. Maybe there's something he's saying. Somebody's receiving something, say amen. Was that number four? The fourth one. And number five, maybe it is not time for him to speak on what you are asking about. Because he makes all things beautiful in his time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Maybe it's not time for him to speak on what you are asking about. God's servant Papa Yerepo spoke about how in the, they have got the land, got the art project and everything, drawing and everything, money, and yet went to God. God said, don't ask me about this thing anymore until I speak to you on it. So, 
when it appears like he's silent. So you unravel all these ways. So is there something you want? Is there something you said before and I, that I'm not doing? Okay. Um, is there something you are expecting of? Is there a way you are speaking I'm not hearing? Let me hear you in all the ways. Is there a result you are expecting of me? I prophesy to someone in this season, the voice of the Lord shall be clear to you. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord, amen. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord, most amen. If you are saying amen, shout amen at the top of your voice. His voice shall be clear to you in Jesus' precious name. That was number eight. Number nine. Watch out for peace. Whenever you receive from God, watch out for peace. The Lord will speak peace. Psalm 85 verse 8. The Lord will speak peace. Watch out for peace. Any, any revelation, anything that you claim to receive that made you lose your peace completely. It doesn't matter how many times you dreamt that dream or heard that voice. Something is wrong. God speaks peace. Any prophecy anybody claims to be given to you that took away your peace. Watch it carefully. Something is wrong somewhere. Am I communicating at all? The, the person may be the most anointed prophet you have ever seen. The vision. Can I tell you, saw Jesus Christ. And Jesus told him many, many things. Then another time, he saw Jesus Christ. And Jesus told him, that one you saw, I was not the one. And he said, if I appear to you a hundred times a day, if I said anything that is contrary to the word, discard it. I'm not the one talking. Which means, he was telling him, Satan is transformed as the angel of light. And can appear to you and say, I am Jesus Christ. See my hand. See my garment. And then begins to talk to you. But the more you think about it, the more you lost your peace. You are just, your life is under pressure. By one so-called revelation. There are people who have almost run mad by one so-called revelation. Whatever it is. That causes, costs you your peace must be checked again. Am I communicating? It's a guidelines that will make us to know what we are hearing. There is nothing that is stronger than the word of God and the witness of the spirit that is evidenced by the peace that you have in your heart. Someone say a loud amen. Someone say a loud amen. There are people who have been uprooted from churches by some direction that cost them their peace. There are people who have lost valuable relationships, even marital relationships, by so-called directions that put them permanently under pressure. Any voice that puts you under pressure must be from the, a voice from hell. Because, I mean, we, when we do, we, we do psychiatry, there are, there are things that are, that are uh, very, very, very clear about the voice of the enemy. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Is somebody getting anything here tonight? Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I receive the grace to hear you clearly and to hear you correctly. I receive the grace not to miss you another time. In Jesus' precious name. Finally, Whenever you are in doubt, cross-check cross with God. 
and trust him for more witnesses. You receive the direction that you are doubting. Is this God? Is this not God? Cross-check with him and trust him for more witnesses. Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, according to Matthew chapter 18 verse 16, every word can be confirmed. Every word can be established. If you dreamt a dream, does that dream line up with the word of God as a witness? As you came to church and the preaching went on, is there anything from the word that confirmed what you thought you heard? God will never leave himself without a witness. He has helped me so much such that at every point in my life when I thought I received this direction if it was him it would be confirmed with diverse multiple witnesses. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. Please hold up to these 10 guidelines. Can you go over it on the screen? Um, and God Number one, be filled with the word of God continually so you can discern if what you are hearing is God or not. Be committed to doing what is written while seeking what he is saying. Be patient in the process of learning and knowing his voice. His sheep hears his voice now. Now, now. But as we grow, sometimes the flesh comes in, sometimes your mind comes in, Sometimes your ambition comes in and you thought it was God is not. So you are patient. Oh, okay, I missed it. And you must admit that you missed it. Then, don't expect God to speak to you exactly the same way he speaks to another. Number four, five, don't be prejudiced. Don't, don't put words in the mouth of God. Don't come with him expecting him to tell you what you want to hear. Don't expect God to speak in areas or issues where his will is already known. Don't trivialize the voice of God. Don't trivialize the voice of God. Don't get discouraged when God appears silent and we have seen some reasons why he may be silent. Number nine, watch out for peace whenever you receive from God. Whatever makes you lose your peace, hold on. 